All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Front Office Podcast featuring Lou. Oh, I almost said Lou. Yeah, and Steve. Um, featuring What's going Lou. on? What's going on, y'all? Yes, Matt, ma'am. Wow, today's just a very <laughs> day for me today. I'm not going to lie to you. But like I said in previous podcasts, I'm going to say it again. Apologize for the delay on these podcasts. I've been out the state. Uh, we've just all been busy as a whole. Um, I feel like I say this every episode, but like we'll, we will try to get back on a regular basis. It is kind of difficult because we all have various schedules, but we will try. This is an ESPN. We don't get paid to do this. We do this for, you know, for fun. We'll get paid one day. We'll get paid one day. You know, like in 10 years, I'll be right next to Steven. Yeah, like Steven will have gray hair and everything. Like Steven, is, and he, you know, he's like, you he can't get mad anymore. You know, his lungs can't take it. But uh, yeah, anyways. He's still going to be trolling the Cowboys. <laughs> Max will still, you know, he'll bleach his hair. He'll be standing up there like saying his. <laughs> He's still fun. He's still fun to be saying he wants Iguodala. Martians pointing guns to the earth. Give me Iguodala. <laughs> that might be like, like of like the most like incredible like as like dumbest things he said. That probably is number one. Like he said, Kawhi is better than LeBron. And then he also bro said, when he tried to say Kawhi was more clutch than Kobe, he started to say that. Like, oh yeah, boy yeah, is yeah. different. He's different, bro. He's he's built different, not built good. Built different. He's different. He probably good. made that. He probably, he probably made that damn list. Yeah, found it. That's why <laughs> he was so quiet. He was like, Steven was mad. He was just Max was just like, eh. that was the, hey, that's the worst list I've ever seen, man. Okay. Yeah, I rather, I rather listen to Molly talk than Max. No cap. Oh, Molly got some fire intake. Don't sleep on Molly. Molly Quinn got sometimes, some. Sometimes, fire. sometimes she's go, she kind of goes off off her rocker. But anyways, let's not get too distracted off here. Let's get right into that list, though. Speaking of that list, thank you. Yes, sir. They yes, dropped their top 25 players under the age of 25. Topping the list was Luca, Zion, Melo, and Donovan Mitchell, and Tatum, the top five. Let me hear y'all thoughts on this. I don't understand. Like, are we going to act like, first of all, are we not going to act like, what's it called? Luca is a great player, but Luca isn't the best player on that list. Let's be real. And the fact they got LaMelo ball over D book. Yeah, hey, hey, that's dumb. I'm sorry. This man hasn't played a full NBA season. Look, LaMelo ball isn't as good as John Morant, simple. John Morant is better than LaMelo ball. And like, they're going to put him. I can't, bro. Like I said this, I said this already, but they need to fire. Whoever made that listen to get fired and strip of their sports credentials, bro. That is dumb. <laughs> they don't watch basketball, they don't watch sports, period. Steve? Um, um, yeah. yeah. Basically, what he said, it seems more like a, a popularity thing rather than like an actual skills thing. Um, like I can understand, like even if you, you you watch basketball, you can make the mistake, and like you can argue Luca, okay, like he might be on the top, like because he's progressed like over the three years he's been in the league, right? Mm -hmm. And he's become a better player, like he's progressively becoming um, like one of the better players in the league with the standing out. But like Melo, especially over Donovan Mitchell, Jason Tatum, um, Devin Booker. Like LeBron said, Devin Booker is one of the most disrespected players in the league, if not the most disrespected. Um, and we were talking about this the other time, and I think it was Nev. He said, like, he could literally drop, like, 100 points in the game, and they would still – they would just be like, ah, it's whatever. Yeah, they'd be on like, ESPN. The Suns played last night. They won. Darren Booker scored 100 points. Anyways, like, yeah. that's how it would go over, bro. Like, they don't care – like, again, Donovan Mitchell mm -hmm. this year has been – the Jazz are eating right now, bro. I mean, bro, that whole team is on fire. And Donovan Mitchell is, like, having a career season, bro. And you're going to put him – he's not even in the top five. Yeah. And even, like, Ben Simmons having a hell of a year, too. I mean, maybe not top mm -hmm. five. At least, top, like, at least maybe a top seven. Ben Simmons Ben Simmons is, like, what he make, what he doesn't get on the offensive side of things. Defensively, he'll make up. He's a hell of a defender. He's a hell of a defender. Like, there's not really – like, there's maybe three, four guys. That's maybe – who can guard one through five on the court. Like, and you think Rudy Gobert is the best defender in the league, probably like since uh, like a while. I, I, mm -hmm. I ain't gonna that. You know what I'm saying? Gonna, Wait, speaking that. of Rudy Gobert, somebody, um, I forgot who it was, but somebody was like, uh, as soon as I saw Rudy guarding me, I knew I'd get more shots up in the game. It was some Rudy, player I'm like, sorry, I feel like Rudy Gobert is better in the paint. Like, I, I don't think it was a For sure, he's, he's very like, he probably yeah, I, I, I ain't gonna say like, I mean like, Best defender in the league. I don't think he can guard one through five. I mean, like he got, you know, he, he probably can go by me guard like one through one through four, but like he, he ain't gonna like. I mean, no, he can't guard one through four. He can guard five. You know, he can guard five and maybe like some like fours who can't shoot. Some you know? fours, yeah. 
Like, no, he he is definitely not going to be guarding one. Well, like you can put Ben Simmons on Kyrie, you can put him on Zion, you can put him on Bradley Beal. Yeah, you, you you can put you can put Ben Simmons on someone who has no handles. You can you can I'm put him on and have and you can have pride on him. You can have trust in him. Like he's going to do it. You're not going to find another six ten. Like not. I'm not going to go talk about Ben Simmons, right? But like starting with the list, Zion should not be number two. Lamelo should not be number three. Um, Lamelo hasn't played a full season. How is he number three? Exactly. And then this is where it goes back with the hype. Like, let me tell you one thing about Zion. Last year, that was everything. ESPN Sports. Like, it could literally could be like a block that like wasn't that good. So, I mean, a block is good, right? But like, it could be like a regular block. Zion. Oh my God. Oh, this year I remember Dream Chaser. Shout out to them. They made a whole video about Lamelo playing basketball. And he he probably made a pass, and then like. What um Che Rogier hits a three and you're like, oh look at that pass again by Lamelo Ball like bro like it's mm-hmm. all whatever he does like you know I'm saying yeah like you said popularity man it's look dumb. back look back at Zion this year he's not getting the same like recognition he got last year and he's playing <laughs> way better like he dropped like oh, yeah. his his numbers this year is amazing like he's definitely improved from last year no doubt they like he's they just beat the Sixers right now and he dropped he had 31 points in the third quarter so. I'm gonna look back to like this right now. He had, he had 37 minutes. Like he he and, just, and he went he went off. Look and like he's not Zion Williams anymore. He's a good player, but do I think he's number two best in the league? Like on, like on that list, looking at the list, no, no way. Top five has to be some 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 kind of combination of Devin Booker, J- Jason Tatum, Donovan Mitchell, Ben Simmons, and then you could throw in like Darren Fox, I guess, like as your fifth player. I, I Brandon Ingram. Mm. Should, low on the list in my opinion brandon ingram is nice like uh, i think he's a good player bro. like, he's like he he's actually is nice now man. i mean look he said he had generational talent i feel like if he if he if he is on a roster that gives him the opportunity to show that off mm-hmm. for sure he can but like you know when you just go to dead end teams bro like teams that just don't help you with your potential right mm-hmm. that's low the pelicans the pelicans have so much talent on that team yeah like they got a lot of like i really think lonzo ain't all that bad it's just he just don't He's not that bad. Honestly, like I saw a video and it was like Lonzo's not even the main. He's playing catch and shoot right now. Eric Bledsoe's playing point guard. So like, how are you gonna take the like? How you gonna take the ball away from a ball handler? You know what I'm saying? He's better than Eric Bledsoe. Eric Bledsoe, he's good and all. He could play. I don't. Yeah. Like no, Lonzo tried that whole uh, catch and shoot in LA. It didn't work for him. It's working now. Like for sure, he's hitting what forty two percent of his threes. But I mean, but I'm trying to say like. We've seen it like not do so well for him in the past, right? And we're just doing better, a little better now. Like, can we just why don't we just give him? He he can handle the ball pretty well. I feel like the ball, like let him not be the main, but let him like facilitate. Let him bring you know do everything. Sure. And then mm-hmm. they got Brand Brandon Ingram is another like talented player, any young player. He's really talented too. Shouldn't be that. Like I'm not saying they're that bad, but like Brandon Ingram, they have they have a, they're, they're like on paper they're very talented. They could, they should be doing more for like what they have. You know what I mean? Like I, sure. I expect them to be higher. Called, Especially with the West being the, like the weaker conference this year, kind of because I mean the, the Nets have five All Stars right now, literally, and maybe one on the Nets are a damn cheat code, bro. Like the Nets are powerhouse. The Sixers have four, three, maybe four All Stars. Bucks had Drew Holiday now. Like the Knicks are playing well. The Bulls are just got new, uh, Nikola Vucevic. Like the East is like better than the West this year. Like. Mm-hmm. It's not as close, but like it's not it's as for no, nah, it's the first time in a minute because ever since LeBron was in the east, it was like if you want a LeBron team, you go into the finals, That's yeah. Crazy. And I mean, I, I mean, I ain't gonna hold you, like it's kind of interesting to see it play out, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. But if you want to talk about the Nets, bro, that's our damn Chico, like they have like Chico. half yeah. of my child, half of my childhood of basketball on that team, bro. Like, Marcus Aldridge, Blake Griffin, Kyrie, James, KD, Andre, uh, not Andre Drummond, what's his face, DeAndre Jordan, they got Joe Harris, Nicholas Clark. Yeah. Like, it's not fair. If buying a ring was a person, bro. they have a bench too. Like, it's not even that. They have a very nice bench, and I don't understand. Like, Everyone's on contract for next year too. Just letting y'all know. <laughs> like, they want to repeat. A, like, they're, like they want to get this ring. And like, bro, like, and the thing is, Katie ain't been playing. Like, Katie played his first game the other day since like February. Mm-hmm. And he played he, really I mean, well. He, he, he went seven. Yeah, he went seven for seven. But my thing is, is like, damn, bro, like. They would they missed KD since February and they've still been like okay. And then that game they like when they dusted the Pelicans, bro, like Harden didn't even play. Yeah. Like it's, it, I think it's been a minute since all three been on the floor together. Haven't they only played like seven times or something? All yeah, together. Yeah, exactly what I'm trying to say. Like, and they're they're just a monstrous team. And then 
And what I tell y'all, what's called? When I told y'all, y'all saying Blake might have been washed up because he hadn't dunked in a while. <laughs> I was like, look, let him go to a team where that, you know, that what's called that, that uh, desire comes back. That man dunking yeah. now like he ain't nothing. Yeah. I mean, again, like probably because he just didn't want to play with the Pistons. That's but. what I'm saying. Detroit is a depressing town. If you are in Detroit, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Your team sucked. You have the Detroit Pistons. You have the Detroit Lions. Yeah. Stop. Go to Minnesota or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was just sad, bro. Like, ah. Um, talking, speaking about moves and that sort of uh, language or conversation. So let's switch to the NFL. Talk about the biggest spenders and moves that were made in the offseason. My boy, Bill spent the STEMI, man. So the question Bill, is- was, Bill said, no jokes. This man grabbed everybody, bro. Uh, bro, the first couple of hours, bro, it just pictures, 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 they, pictures, they pictures. Like, they don't do anything. Like, you, they just don't, they just sit quiet and they draft. Literally, that's all they do. Bro, bro like, uh. what you better do with all that talent? Like, bro, what you, like, no, seriously, like, what you better do with all that talent? Like, I'm surprised the uh, Raiders didn't re-sign Nelson Aguilar. I thought they were. And then, I mean, I'm a Ravens fan. We lost Matt Judon. That, that hurt. But, like, they, they, I mean, I'm not saying they overpaid, but they paid that boy big bucks. So is that your so the, is that the biggest winner of free agency for you? Do you think? Yeah. The biggest winner of the Patriots? As in like uh, out of all the offensive moves they made, who improved the most and is like gonna compete, like you know, ready to compete next year? Uh I think Matt Jones up there. I'm gonna lie to you, but like I would definitely say like I mean the Patriots obviously, I mean they made a lot of moves. I'm a, I'm I mean, I don't know. Uh, if I have to say like a biggest team win, right? An organization that made the most moves, obviously. Uh, but I mean, I don't want to sleep on the Rams though. They got Matt Stafford, and I know that's that's nothing. But like, and also I'm gonna sleep on the Bills. They added Emmanuel Sanders. They already had a nice receiving core. Yeah, Stephon Diggs, Emmanuel Sanders, and then Cole Beasley. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And look at that. That's a lot of talent on that world. It's called receiving core, and you know, I was cool. I mean, I hate to say, it, but like the Cowboys, low key making some low key moves that looking interesting too, like hiring a Dan Quinn and what's it called, like. Beefing up that defense. Another defense has been beefing up. Yeah. Jacksonville Jaguars. They're signing everybody on that defense. Yeah. Steve? I don't know. It's it looking interesting. Um, I, mean, I didn't really pay much in attention to, like, free agency. I just saw, like, the Patriots making all the moves. Um, yeah. I didn't pay much attention to free agency, so I can't really say much. Oh, okay. me. This might surprise some of y'all. Not surprise, but, like, maybe, like, y'all forgot about this, but the Cardinals? I don't know, man. They signed AJ Green. They signed uh, what's the place? They signed a cornerback. I forget what his name. They did let Patrick Peterson go, but wait, they signed, did they, did they resign him? I nah, he went to Minnesota. Okay, yeah. So they made a couple moves. They got AJ Green. I think they got an offensive lineman. I think they got they did Kenyon Drake back. I don't know, man. Like, like I'm not saying Kyler Murray can't make any more excuses, but like he has a team now. He has AJ Green. He has DeAndre Hopkins. Like. Honestly, maybe AJ was playing a Blake Griffin. Didn't want to play in Cincinnati. Just didn't try last year. But if AJ Green plays anything close to what he played like in 2015, you have two top five, not a top. Let me say top ten receivers on both sides of the ball. You have uh, what's Chris Chris Thompson? Not Chris Thompson. What's his name? Uh, number thirty, Christian Kirk, slot. You know what I'm saying? Like that offense is deadly, and their offensive line was. Ah, uh, but that was called. That. They didn't resign Keon Drake. He went to the Raiders. Did he actually? Okay. Well, they have still yeah. Edmonds, Trey Edmonds. So. No, they still got, like, I'm saying, like, the Arizona's looking pretty. Like, I mean, I'm going to take a hot take right now. NFC West, bro, Seattle coming to last place in that division. Mm, nah, I doubt it. Place. I just highly doubt yeah, it. Look, no, like, the thing is, you are surrounded with teams who have nice D-lines right now. Bro. You've Boy, got the San, San Francisco 49ers D-lines already been a mag- they, I mean, they were injured last year. You don't hold that against them. They and then you got um, Eric Armstead or whatever. He went to the Colts. And then, all right, all right, yeah, but look, look, their, their secondary is nice. It is. Uh, what's the sec- secondary is nice. What's it called? Uh, every like, what's it called? The linebackers they, they still got Fred Warner. Like they're still they they're getting Nick Bosa back, right? But the thing like, is, quarterback play is what's really questionable. If Jimmy Garoppolo gets hurt again, don't know about that. Even if they, dr- I mean, they're gonna draft the quarterback most likely. They're gonna, they're, I, I'm, I'm, I, they're gonna draft the quarterback. Come on, they, like I, I was looking at things like you understand. Uh, do you remember that one play in the Super Bowl when they played? It was called. The uh, Chiefs, when he overthrew, I think, well, who was it? Somebody. I think it was Emmanuel Sanders. Open, right? Yeah. Bro, like, I think if I'm Kyle Shanahan, I'm still remembering that play. That could have high-key to the ring. 
I did see a TikTok, exactly. <laughs> so, no, I'm saying, like, I'm yeah. saying, like, yo, like, that's something I'm looking at. And, like, you got, like, kids like Zach Wilson out here, like, showing off. Like, hey, yeah. if he gets injured, I might be telling Zach Wilson, look, if he gets injured and start messing up, I'm putting you right in. Speaking of Zach Wilson, who are your top three quarterback draft prospects next year in a draft class that includes – Kellen Mons from, I think, University of Texas, Texas Tech, I forget. Kellen Mons, Matt Jones from Alabama, Trevor Lawrence from Clemson, Justin Fields from Ohio State, and BYU quarterback Justin, or what's his name? Uh, Zach Wilson? Yeah. Yeah, Zach Wilson. So what do y'all think about them? And who do you think, okay, rank it one through five out of all those five. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is going number one. Come on now. Yeah, that's, 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 that's granted. That's given. That's a given. Even like they had an interview with Urban Meyer, and he was like, "A safe score going that way." Yeah. Um. I I feel like I'm not a big I'm not a big buyer on Mac Jones. Look, wow. I can tell you, I said this one time. You have the best head coach in the nation, surrounded by the best O line in the nation, surrounded by the best receiving core in the nation. You go and look like a Greek god. He throw the ball. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah. You have like. Like I don't know, bro. Like be real with you, like. Uh, I, I'm not going to be a big on, I was called uh, Mac Jones. I mean, I'm going to say Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, and uh, I want to say Justin Fields. I, I, I think he's probably going to be the most promising QB to come out of uh, Ohio State. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. Um, yeah, for sure. Like Nev said, I'm definitely putting Trevor Lawrence at number one. Um, he played very well in college, and I feel like he's going to prove himself when he comes in. Um, Zach Wilson, I'm going to put him at number two. That's what you did, right? Yeah. Yeah. Put Zach Wilson at number two and then Justin Fields at number three. Okay. Um, here's the thing with me. I don't okay, so Justin Fields began on like, hate. I don't think I don't understand why the number two quarterback literally like Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields, if you literally like go back to I think they were on QB behind the like behind the scenes or whatever on Netflix since high school. They've been one and two literally since they were juniors in high school. And then Justin Fields goes to Georgia, right? And then he transfers to Ohio State and then kills it two years in a row. So, like, I'm just confused on why, like, all of a sudden Justin Fields has all these issues that Zach Wilson doesn't have. And, like, Justin Fields played better competition than BYU probably didn't play that many competition, right? So, like, Justin or Zach Wilson might be good. I don't, I'm not saying he's bad, but, like, he was looking good against scrubs. Justin Fields beat Clemson by, what, 30 points and dropped six touchdowns on their head? Clemson defense isn't isn't a joke. That's like probably top three defense in the in all of the what's called like college football. So like Justin Fields is my number two, maybe even my number one low key because of the way Trevor Lawrence looked in that championship game. And I think with Trevor Lawrence, he's a more safer pick because I mean he's just like you know he's just the the prototypical quarterback, six six with good with a good arm, you know, mobile. But Justin Fields, like if he plays to his potential, he's probably going to be a better prospect than uh, Trevor Lawrence. But I got three Zach Wilson. I got Trey Lance number four because North Dakota low key produces pretty good quarterbacks. And I'm not sure. Yeah, that's your boy Carson Wentz plays. They do, <laughs> but like I'm just like they're they've won the FBS thing like four or five years in a row. So I think six years. They before even Carson Wentz got there, like that they they play good football. And I think just the, like people who like the offensive people who come out of there, like tight ends and receivers, they seem to do well in the NFL. So I got Trey Lance number four, and then I got uh, what's his face, Kellen Mons number five. I saw some of his pro day. He's pretty good. He's, he's likes that. Don't sleep about that old tackle from Oregon, man. Uh, I, I think Sewell was his name, bro. Like, yo, like, bro, these old linemen are key. Like, if I'm the Jets, that's who I'm looking at, man. Like, I know you traded away, but, but here's the thing, though. I know they traded away Sam Darnold, right? Yeah. Which I'm not mad at, by the way, because, again, teams that don't help you succeed, get out of it. Because Sam Darnold, he shows promise. Like, he, he, he looks pretty decent in some games, you know what I mean? Yeah. But when you have teams that call all-out blitz on, like, the last couple seconds of the game, yeah. I can see why you lose every, almost every single game. Like, mm-hmm. when they played the Cleveland Browns, it was low-key nice when they beat the Cleveland Browns, which, by the way, I'm ever so grateful. That, that let Baltimore get in the playoffs. That was, oh, man, amazing. But you feel me, though? I'm trying to say, like, yeah. it's, like, some teams don't want to help you. I'm thinking high-key with that. Yeah. Carolina team to watch, man. Like, yeah. I, know they, I, I know they were, like, all in on Deshaun Watson, mm-hmm. you know, but like his situation, you know, clouded now, you know, he's going to let the uh, illegal uh, operation take care of that, legal system take care of that. Uh, but what's it called? Yeah, like it was definitely crazy. Like they were talking about giving up Christian McCaffrey for him. Like they wanted like Deshaun badly, but now that they got Sam Darnold, 
I mean, granted that, that on paper it doesn't look like the best QB room in the world with Teddy Bridgewater and uh, what's it called, Sam Darnold. But I think they're gonna do something big. I don't even know. If I'm Teddy Bridgewater. I want to get out because it's clear that I mean you don't trade for a young quarterback who just got drafted what two three years ago. So if I'm him, I want to go. I want to go to like the Bears, maybe. You know, Andy Dalton's not gonna last long. I'm so sorry. He's good and all. Like I, mean, I don't think he's gonna last long. The Bears are in the hot seat. I don't know how the hell you trade for. I mean, not even trade to sign any. We need to play also this year, but like, if they don't go to the Super Bowl or something, like, eh, this year, eh, getting cut. I think Matt Nagy, nah, 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 Matt Nagy's on the hot seat, bro. Like, if they don't never happen. Those are uh, GM. Bro, that whole team. Like, again, there's so many teams out here that just are so dysfunctional. Yeah. And it, it's sad to see, like, I, I don't know, like, sometimes, again, like, how how you about to be on the hot seat and then Andy Dalton? Like, Andy Dalton? Like, I feel bad for the Bears fan. They was all hyped by Russell Wilson. They didn't get Russell Wilson. Yeah. And then that's in there. <laughs> I don't even know why he want to go to Chicago as if, like, that situation is any better than what he has. In- it's not. No, i be real with you. I feel like Seattle playing. If I'm Seattle, by the way, I would be willing to fire Pete Carroll. I like, would. I know he's a great coach, but Russell Wilson is the future of that franchise. Pete Carroll would go way before Russell Wilson would. I'm sorry. But they was treating him disrespectfully. They wasn't, they wasn't treating him with the respect he deserved. For some reason, they were trying to treat him like he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't like a priority. Like he isn't a franchise QB. Like he didn't bring that uh, franchise their first uh, Super Bowl win. I mean, he's two back to back. And I mean, he's, he's one run away. High, high key, I'm not even mad. He should have won them two. That was a bad call. Sure. Like that mm-hmm. was a bad call on the um, P. Carroll on him. Like, yeah, I'm not. I'm not mad at. I'm not mad. Blaine Russell wasn't on that. Like, I don't was, go about that, bro. How do you have the best running back in the league at the time? You want to, bro. Still top top quarterback in my opinion. I mean, like, he. I feel like. I mean, he has offensive weapons. He just needs a line, and his defense needs to help close out games a lot better. That's but they're making no moves on the defensive end. Like, look, I, I know they lost. What's it called? Um, was it Shaquille or Shaquem? I forgot which one. But they lost yeah. Shaquille Griffin to Jacksonville. Yeah, and like, didn't they cut Carlos Dunlap? No, 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 he's still with them. He's still with them. He's still with them. Okay, okay, but like, look, like they're not resign. Like, what are you doing? Like, you literally, I said that earlier in this podcast. Seattle's defense, like, look, the Rams are having an amazing defense. That's obvious, bro. From yeah. the sec- I mean, I know they lost. It was called I think Joe Johnson, right, to the Browns. But I mean, that's a big loss. But like, still, they have a nice. They have a nice secondary. Jalen Ramsey is straps. I haven't seen a corner like play that well since I think I want to say Darrell Revis. Yeah, this dude is locking people up. Like this dude is locking up. He came that guy. Like, that's hard to do. Yeah. This dude gave Darius Slay the work. And Darius Slay is tough. Like, you feel me? Like, this is like, yeah. he's out here, like, they're out here balling with the Rams. And then you got the, uh, what's it called? The San Francisco Fortnite, as I said earlier, they have a nice, technologies are, I mean, the technologies are, but the linebackers in the line is nice. And then the Arizona Cardinals with the signing of J.J. Watt? Oh, yeah. Their team is going to be OC now. Ooh, like, bro, like, they already had, what's it called? Was it uh, Chandler Jones, right? Jones, yeah. Mm-hmm. And JJ Watt on one D line, yeah, bro. Baker. You can double. You can only. You can only double team so many. Yeah, Buddha Baker. Like, you can only double team. I uh, was called uh, uh, like so many times on a defensive line. You know, like I'm telling you, like if Seattle doesn't make drastic moves on that de- to help that defense, right? Mm-hmm. They come in in last place in the division. Oh god, uh, I don't know about. I don't know about last. In my opinion, I just feel like they 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 will pull it out some fashion, some sort, you know. I just don't think that that offer, like that team's going to go at least 9 and 7, 10 and oh, actually no, it's actually 9 and 8 now, 10 and 7. So, um they're they're not they're not going to have like a losing record in my opinion. I just unless someone gets hurt, Russell Wilson gets hurt, 0 and 0 and 17 low key, but yeah. not, I mean, I heard I heard they was trying to they was trying to um mess around with Alex Smith. Who the Seahawks? I think he's going to I think he's going to the what team was he going to? Was it the Bears? No, I thought, no. What team was it? I mean, you do well. You, well, you do know who Russell Wilson's backup has been for all these years, right? Wasn't it Tavares? Geno Smith. Geno Smith. He's getting bad. Yeah, I'm so happy. That man was so doo doo on the Jets and had the audacity. Of, like, I think I'm one of the best QBs out here. I was like, <laughs> I mean, Blaine Blair. was the backup for Tom Brady. Who? Blaine Gabbert. You remember him? He was in Jacksonville, right? Yeah, he, was, he was drafted in the same draft class with like Jake Locker and uh Christian Ponder. It was like one of the worst <laughs> draft classes of all that. Yeah, like, the draft class were like Aaron nah, Rodgers. yeah, no, yeah, like the funny thing, yeah, that's a whole different topic. Draft busts are a whole different topic, man. Yeah, but hey, man, next episode, we're going to do a mock draft one through 32. We're not doing second round, third round, like you know, I love the NFL, but like 
I can barely name one through 32. Maybe, maybe we'll just yeah. do like, no, let's just do like one round, get like all the teams we think, like, you know, like all the teams. I, I think, I think, I mean, every team, no, not every team's in the first round, but like, what's the first round of the way, bro? We'll, just, we'll do the first round, maybe like, maybe it's like the top 12. We'll just see, you know, like, we're, we're not going to sit here and act like we were like Bucky Brooks and Daniel Jeremiah and like we know everybody, but like, we'll do our best. We'll, we'll try here and there. I mean, look, if I end up real quick, um, y'all favorite teams, y'all, I want y'all to say what y'all think y'all need, need is for each favorite team. Like, uh, Thomas, tell me what you need for the Eagles, what you think their biggest need in the draft is, should they, or is someone they should trade for. Steve, let me know what you think the Washington football team is doing. I'll let you know what the Ravens do. So go ahead, Thomas. Um, in the draft or just in general? Yeah, you can do both, draft general, but, like, let's do the draft right now, though. Uh, I think in the draft, the biggest thing we need is either a corner or a receiver. Uh, I don't think Kyle Pitts is gonna uh, is gonna fall to the uh, number twelve, which I wish because Kyle Pitts is literally like <laughs> a six six like a yep. unicorn. He is the Ben Simmons of the NFL, low guess, but that's what that's how I define it. I don't know. Bro, this man is playing tight end and moving like a receiver. He can he ran a four four right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's playing tight end, moving like a receiver. So he's a six six wide receiver running tight end. Like no one, there's no one in NFL can guard him. Forget linebackers. If you put him at tight end. Bobby Wagner's not guarding him. I'm so sorry. I like he's the best linebacker. You're gonna, you're, you're, gonna, you're, you're, gonna need, you're gonna need you're gonna need help over top. You're gonna need help over top. But um, Devonte Smith, if he's available, Patrick Sertain, uh, corner receiver. Honestly, I, I honestly like as long as we don't draft the defensive end for the fourth year in a row, I'm so straight because Howie Roseman was, likes to draft his DNs, which only Derek Barnett has, has like, turned out good. But like corner receiver, maybe. Maybe tight end Kyle Pitts if he lands there, but I doubt it. So that's what I think. I mean, we really should put some input real quick. I mean, like some of y'all team, like I don't understand. Like they'll invest in a D line for so many years in a row, but don't have much to show for it. Like yeah. I'm gonna give Washington their props. They've been investing that D line for a minute, and look at that D line now. Like I don't know. Like I just feel like and again, the Eagles have a curse. They just can't draft well. I mean, our D line is pretty good. Like we we got a Fletcher Cox, Van Graham. Vinny Curry was good for a while until he got old. Derek Bourne, that's pretty good. Six and a half sacks last year before he got hurt. I mean, I'm not saying, like, we, like, drafted bad, the deep, like, defensive lot, defensive-wise, but it's more like we – that's not the biggest, like, you know, we need to, like, right now, we're in win-now mode, right? right? So, like, we kind of need, like a, like, a like a start-now player. Not like, oh, sit behind Brandon Graham. Sit behind Fletcher Cox. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to help us. So. All right. All right. How about you, uh, Steve? Uh, for Washington – I feel like they need to both they need to look at like both sides of the ball, defense and offense. Um the two main things that I think they need to look for is like linebackers and like um somebody for their secondary, like free safety or um just somebody that can help out with that secondary because you don't like you don't like, like you don't think Landon Collins can help out with that? I mean he can, but like he's I feel like they need to like get more help. Hmm? I feel like he's he's a little bit better than Jamal Adams in coverage. But, like, when you think about it, they're both box safeties. So, like, mm -hmm. not the best in coverage. Like, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't trust Landon Collins in coverage. Like, he's not – he's an average coverage man. You know what I'm saying? He's not like Earl Thomas. He's not like – and it, Earl Thomas is a free agent, right? I just thought about that. But he's not he is Earl a free Thomas. agent. He's not like, you know, like those zone cover – like zone safeties. He's more of like a, okay, I'm going to sit right here. If you throw it to me in my box, catching it. But, like, I'm a – like, mm -hmm. a, my support is safety. But you, you don't like Cam Curl? I mean, Cam Curl kind of balled out this season because, you know, with uh, – Landon Collins being hurt. Mm -hmm. That's from you, Steve. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's me. Um, I mean, yeah, but like the the safety did. Um, the secondary didn't look um like as strong as it should have, especially like near the end of the season. Um, they were they were looking pretty weak. I, I feel like if they pick out somebody well in the draft, they can um they can find like a way to strengthen up that uh that secondary in the defense. Um, other than that, I feel like they should look into. Uh, tight end Logan Thomas, like he bought out. Like, he he did his thing. Like he was a solid uh, tight end. But other than him, um, I don't think there's anybody there to like help out in the tight end position. And uh, they should also whether whether it's this draft or like the next one, they should be looking for a quarterback. Yeah, I definitely believe like the signing of Ryan Fitzpatrick is like to get buy him time. To yeah. find someone in the league or draft someone they really like. Be real with you, man. Like, it's just, yeah, like, Washington, like, they cut Thaddeus Moss today. I don't know if y'all know that. That's Randy, Randy Moss's Moss, yeah. son. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, from LSU. I mean, granted, he was tough in LSU, but I mean, he really didn't get many snaps. Yeah, he spent like the last couple, like I think last four or five games on the injured reserve. So they got mm-hmm. they got him today. I mean, we wish him the best, obviously, but yeah, you definitely do need like uh, what's it called? Uh, you definitely need a tight end there. Logan Thomas definitely balled out, but I mean, even if like I know like Spr- was, like Jordan Sprinkle or something like that, Summer Sprinkle or whatever, Jeremy Sprinkle. I know he 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 left. He signed with the Cowboys. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I definitely need someone on that side. Um, Kelly, yeah, a lot. Where do you He's over. Trey Lance falls. I know the the rest. Of the, uh, oh, almost said the word. If the football team picks, I think what twenty one or twenty something because they wild card round, right? So yeah. if Trey Lance falls that far, or if I think I'm on probably at that point, or maybe in second round, they should probably take him because like he is not somebody who's gonna like he can learn behind um, Fitzpatrick. And in my opinion, he might be better than Tua because I'd rather have, like, Texas Tech quarterbacks, like Patrick Mahomes, as we saw, they, they love to throw a ball down the field. So, like, you know, having something like that wouldn't really hurt. I mean, we've seen how Patrick Mahomes turned out. So, I don't know, Texas Tech quarterbacks, give him another chance. You know what I'm saying? No, I mean, Trey Lance, he falls to Washington. I think that's a grab. You got to grab him. You got uh, him. That's, like, yeah, give him some time to, like, learn from the pros, obviously. And mm-hmm. you you have Till Heineke for, like, what, another year? I think two years or something like that, right? You know, yeah. a solid, but he'd be a solid backup. Like, I mean, I feel like that isn't a bad thing. Like, you you signed Fitzpatrick that one year. Like, have him learn for the year and, like, eventually, like, have like, what Miami did, like, have games where, like, you can, like, you know, start with, like, Fitzpatrick. And then, if, if like, you know, you feel confident, put in Trey Lance. And mm-hmm. then, you know, if Trey Lance starts like, messing up, chopping up, put, put, you know, Fitzpatrick back in. Like, I, I just feel like, like, everybody should be, you know, trying to work for the best of the team. Mm-hmm. And I believe with linebackers, Washington's always been struggling with linebackers. Linebackers have been always something they need. And, I mean, Mama Vera is, like, one of those defensive – how you play a linebacker, you know what I mean? So, hopefully, we can find you a good linebacker. Um, when it comes to Baltimore, man, we need it. I know we got that one man from Indianapolis. I forgot something, Houston. I know we got him coming for workout, and I'm hoping we sign him. But uh, there's rumors that we uh, we could be signing AB. I don't want to get too excited, but – I mean – Because he was working out about, with uh... – yeah, yeah. and I know I think he's related to Marquise Brown. I think his cousins or something like that. So yeah, that's his cousin. Yeah, yeah. So like, but I'm saying like, if we can lie, if we can land Antonio Brown, bro, a receiving core with Sammy Watkins, Marquise Brown, and Antonio Brown, hey, that's a nice. And you got Lamar Jackson, and you got J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. Hey, that's a nice setup. Yeah. But uh, I would definitely say though, like, edge rushers, man, edge rushers. Uh, I think our safeties are set. I mean. Linebacker wise, we brought back LJ Ford and we got Patrick Queen balled out last year for a rookie. Oh, he definitely balled out. Granted, I mean, I don't think he was deserving of a rookie. I mean, he wasn't up there with rookie, rookie of the year. I mean, defense rookie of the year and all that. Oh, like, no, no, for sure. No, no, no. But he balled out though. He was pretty playing pretty well. I think he had a couple bad passes. He had a couple picks. Like, man, and our defense is pretty set. I think we have one of the most expensive defenses in the NFL. And I mean, it kind of shows off. Like, our last game of the season against uh, Buffalo, we kind of held one of the best off, highest scoring offenses to like, what, seven points? The other seven came up the pick six. Lamar through. So, like, I'm saying, like, we, we, I think we're still on defense. I see edge rushers because, like I said earlier, the loss of Matthew Judon. Like, again, that man was a dog. Don't get me wrong. Um, I believe, like, yeah. And then I want to say beef the O line up maybe a little bit. Like, I don't like DJ Funk there. I mean, he played all right, but like, I think we got to move on from him. Ben Powers, I mean, probably put, I know one thing we need, like, for the O line, especially, like, I know we got Kevin Zeitler at guard, and he's a pretty good guard from Baltimore. I mean, um, from New York, from the Giants. Yeah. I think what we got to do is that we definitely need to uh, – I'm looking at Creed Humphrey from Baltimore, to be honest with you guys. Uh, center from, uh, I think, Oklahoma. Oh, man, if I can get – if you can follow my lap, I'm going to take him because, like, not even the Buffalo game. We have had problems snapping the ball all season long, and and I hated that, like, because of a bad snap, put our QB, our QB1 in jeopardy, you know what I mean, with that concussion. Yeah. And I'm telling you, like, we we need to we need to work on that. So I'm saying like if I'm Baltimore, I'm looking at an O line. I'm looking at an edge rusher, and if I can find one more receiver, I can trade for or sign one more receiver. I mean, does Brian still out there? Tony Brown still out he there? Not, he's not coming back actually. Yeah, he's not coming. I, back. I think. He, he, yeah, he. I mean, he said all due respect. Uh, Baltimore isn't the place for him because we had horrible freaking um, wide receiver coaching. Like, and you coach. see? Did you see the? Did you not see? The vi- I was called the videos that Des Bryant put out of like at practice. This dude was like burning with Lamar Jackson and QB. Obviously, was burning like the first team Ravens defense. Like he was put in what's called uh, this is got Marlon Humphrey on skates, man. Like 
out here, like they were doing things, but like when you have vanilla basic route running skills and a basic wide receiver coach, it's just gonna get yeah. Like, did you not see us against Baltimore? I mean, it was against the Bills. Like, uh, and then plus, I'm hoping you know Lamar out here working. You know, he gets his reads better. I promise you, bro. I'm thinking we're one or two years away from the Super Bowl, man. I'm saying that right now. I just think that if Des Bryant, last thing I'll say before I end it off, I think Des Bryant needs to go somewhere like the Chiefs or Bucks, like somewhere like with this established quarterback room. Because this man, like, up until like Dak got there, and when Dak got there, so did Zeke. And when Zeke and Dak got there, and like you know, I feel like the play call kind of changed. Like, like Tony Romo yeah. was more speed. Nah, it, 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 when, 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 yeah, when Zach and Dak, Dak came, it, when yeah, Dak and Zeke came, it became a run heavy offense. I'm not saying they would four speed Dez, but like it was kind of the same way like Stafford would throw the ball to Megatron. Like you know, it was kind of like go out and make a play, and he would like he'd go out and make a play, but Dak wouldn't really have the same trust in Dez. The same like Dak is more like I'm gonna spread it to everybody, and Romo was like. I'm going to throw it to y'all if y'all open, but, like, my first option is always going to be Dez. You know, throw up that X, you feel me? Because any think about it. They had DeMarco Murray, who, in my opinion, in his prime, was way better than Zeke. Like, just that's just me. I don't understand how this man had the record for most 100-yard games in one season, and they trade him next year. Uh, Wait, De- DeMarco or Dez? DeMarco Murray. Lots of free agency. So I'm talking with the Eagles. Okay, that, okay, okay. Yeah. And he was never the same afterwards. That's because Chip Kelly's not a run offense. <laughs> He said, yeah, Chip Kelly, Chip Kelly was trying to destroy he had, he, they, he had Marco Murray running stretches and outside zones when he's a like he's like a Derrick Henry. Like, just give him the ball, let him run. Like, no, I'm telling you right now, like when Chip Kelly was there, his main his agenda number one was to destroy the Eagles. His main thing, like the thing with Chip Kelly, like his offense worked the first couple of years, literally because no one has ever ran that fast before. Like the Eagles were one, like I mean, granted they had Deshaun Jackson, Michael Vick. He was doing that, he was doing that Oregon Tempo, right? The Oregon Tempo thing. Like, like I wasn't getting on the like, like are they good? No, yeah, I remember what's the call when I was playing like Jay. Uh, uh, I was playing. I was playing football. Yeah, that was called Paint Branch. Like we was doing that with Oregon shit. I'm at, you know, I played the line. That shit was tiring as hell, boy. What you talking about? And like these are NFL players. It's, it's no, it's it's like it's like five minutes in the game. We were We already went fifteen. Like we already went like ten plays. I'm like, bro, here's some water. <laughs> like, <laughs> bro, like, <laughs> I don't know. It worked the first year because, yo, like, no one's like, you know, the no huddle every single play. Defenses have to like make subs and everything. You really be catching oh. off guard. Yeah, no, you, you, but I ain't gonna hold you. Yeah, like, all I'm gonna say is, I guess, yeah, like, this season about to be interesting. And I, like, I'm gonna put this again. If we can sign one more receiver as we as in Baltimore, hey, I promise you right now, catch us a Super Bowl. Sir, but on that note, on that note, thank you for watching another episode of the Front Office Podcast featuring that and yeah. and one more thing. Let me put that off for this. Hey, we still need uh what that Jack Eastery boy in Houston and get out, bro. We don't like you. Simple. You you don't know how to run an organization. No one likes you there. Please get out. Houston is begging you to sell. Or not sell, please. Free for, hey, it's not free to show anymore, it's free Houston. We don't know about that, man. Free use. Free use. Free use. Deshaun's pending. Deshaun's pending until further, you know, notices. When we figure out everything on Deshaun, we can say free Deshaun. But until then, bro, hey, much love. Appreciate y'all for checking us out. There. Peace. See ya.